Welcome to Mr. C's Cooking Experiment, Episode 3. As promised, we're going to do the Sicilian Arancini. There are a lot of recipes out there, a lot of videos out there how to do it, a lot of stories. I'm going to tell you all the story of how I first came across this dish when I took a vacation with my family to Sicily. And during that time, it was August, my father-in-law, Michele's birthday, my brother-in-law, Francesco's birthday, the Feast of the Assumption, a lot of great celebrations going on. During the second week, though, we went to my brother-in-law's father's house. It was up on a mountain. We drove up to the top of the mountain, I remember, and then we came back down to get to the house. Once we got out of the car, you had these aromas just hit you. Basil, garlic, tomatoes, fresh bread, you know, but the thing that caught my eye were these little cone-shaped breaded rice thingies. I didn't know what they were. I was told they were arancini. And I, uh, the pictures that we put up here are the pictures of them unfried in the fryer that they were done in. Now, that was honestly, that was one of the highlights of my three-week trip that we took to Sicily. So I wanted to turn around here and uh, share the recipe that I developed from it when I came back to America. So, I just want to make this clear. We are trying to replicate what was done. It's like people trying to replicate the Philadelphia cheesesteak down here in South Florida. You want to get a real cheesesteak? You go to Philadelphia, just so you know. Want a real New York bagel? Go to New York. So, we're going to do our best to replicate this dish. We also have some fun things that we're going to do as well. I have an interview I did previously this week with a friend of mine from Sicily. Haven't heard from him in a long time. And, uh, what is this? Is this music? No, no, stop the music. My bad. Right, okay, we're, we're gonna do that at the end. So what do you say we get onto this arancini? Let's start with the ingredients, shall we? Okay, the ingredients to make the arancini. The arancini are gonna be done in two main parts the ragu and the chunks of cheese that go inside the arancini and the rice. And eventually we're going to bread all of this and deep fry it. But let's go over the ingredients for the ragu. We have two tablespoons of fresh garlic, half a cup of fresh peas, half a cup each of celery, onions, and carrots. They are chopped fine. Three large bay leaves, a pound of ground chuck, two tablespoons of tomato paste, and 15 ounces of crushed tomatoes. We're going to add in also three quarters of a cup of red wine as we cook all of this together, just so you know. Now the cheese that I used to put inside the arancini is a much more solid mozzarella cheese. Uh, it's low moisture. Uh, and uh, I found it much better when deep frying than the fresh mozzarella. So that's the kind of cheese we used. Now for the rice, one cup of Arborio rice, one, um, I think zero one one grams of uh, saffron, you can just call it a pinch if you want, I have fresh Parmesan cheese that I'm going to be grating into the rice, and four cups of chicken stock. Okay, so we're going to begin the ragu by lightly sauteing the celery onions and the carrots. Then we're going to add in our garlic. Saute that for about 15 seconds, tell you the truth. We're doing this all on a medium to high heat for those of you who have an electric stove or even a gas stove. After that, we then put in the ground beef. Okay, as you can see, we fully cooked our meat. The bay leaves are in there. We have drained off any excess fat that was in the pot. We'll add our tomatoes. 
the paste and the crushed tomatoes. We have already added the wine, just so you know as well. Well incorporated, we're going to turn that down to low. We're going to cover it. Let that go for about 25 minutes. All right, so now we're gonna make the rice. Um, what we've done here is we've warmed our chicken stock and we've added in our saffron threads about 10 minutes prior, just so you know. Uh, the reason for that is to let the saffron bleed into the stock. Gives them a nice rich flavor, a nice yellow flavor as well. Now, risotto has been done like this a long, long, long time. And that is that you're going to add a little bit at a time, let the rice soak in the stock, and then keep adding the stock until your rice is finished. Now there's people that have said you can do this in a rice cooker. Go right ahead. If you've got a, a good recipe for it, there's people who've done it in a steamer, a regular steamer. Go right ahead. This is how I was taught to do it. This is how I saw uh, the best quality rice come out. And it does take time, but it's worth it in the end. So we do this on a high flame. So as I said, you add the, the stock in, it'll start boiling, it'll start soaking into the rice. And the more and more you add, the more yellowish flavor this saffron is going to give to it. It gives it a fantastic flavor. And once it's starting to cool down, we're going to add the Parmesan cheese to it. Uh, we'll grate it in at the end. Okay, so now as you can see, we have added all of our stock. It has been absorbed. And this is a beautiful yellow color has those red threads all throughout it. Turn this off. At the same time, the ragu is finished. So, it did take about 20-25 minutes to do that rice, but this is when we add the peas, okay? I don't add them in the beginning because I don't want them to get completely obliterated in this. They'll stay bright green as well, and when you fry the arancini as well, they'll stay that way. So, put those in, set that to the side. Now, with the rice, what we're going to do is going to put this in something that we can cool it down in. I use a half hotel pan. You can use a Pyrex if you want. Spread this out here. Like so. It will cool a lot faster. John cheese as well into this. I put about a quarter cup, about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Mix that in with it as well. Always check your seasoning, folks, as you're cooking it, when it's done. And then this is going to go into a refrigerator 
for about a half hour, cool enough so that we can turn around here and uh, make the arancini from it. So as promised, now we're going to have a little excerpt from my interview with my friend from Sicily. So let's go to that. Today on The Experiment, we have a very special guest via satellite from a remote location in Sicily, Don Cristoforo. Don Cristoforo, fantastic to see you. So how are things in Sicily and how are your family? First of all, uh, I'd like to thank you for having me on today. It's fantastic. You know. My family is doing great over here. And, uh, I hope your family is doing well as well. You know what I mean? A great man once told me, uh, Jimmy Lampers, says, a man can't be a man if he doesn't spend time with his family. So true, right? <laughs> so true, sir. So true. But tell me this, we understand your arancini recipe is world famous over there in Sicily. Do you have any words of wisdom, any insight you can give us to your method on how you do it? I don't understand. These people, they come up to me. They say, Don Cristofano, give me your arancini recipe. But they don't ask with respect. They don't even say, please, what the hell is wrong with these people? I don't get it. Anyhow, you know, there's no big secret to it, though. Huh? Thank you so much, sir. Just one more question. Things are tough nowadays. So how are things in business over there for you in Sicily? Are things going well? My business, my business is good. My people tell me we're up 14.8% in the last fiscal year. People disappearing is down. It's fantastic. Anyhow, I'd just like to say it's been fantastic to be on your show. And don't be a stranger. You come to my house when you come to Sicily, okay? <laughs>
This recipe makes six of these cones. Okay, so we have breaded all of our arancini. It's ready to go. We're going to put them in the deep fryer, okay, which is at 375 degrees. Those are going to fry for about four minutes. Now, we've done one already. So what you're going to notice when you do this is you're going to notice that the uh, ragu is quite more than you need. So what I decided to do was I decided to add a little heavy cream to it to make a sauce for this versus the traditional marinara. If you like marinara and you got a great marinara recipe, by all means use it with this. It's great. But I decided I was going to take some of this ragu, add a little heavy cream to it, and give you a much lighter look. Arancini right there. We're going to add basil for garnish, and away we go. Okay, so there you have it, the Sicilian arancini. Uh, something that uh, I discovered when I took my trip to Sicily with my family years ago. And I have to dedicate this to my family in Italy, uh, especially Francesco, Mimo, his family, uh, Pina, Michele, them, Louisa, Freddy, Katerina, all of you guys, this is for you. And um, I know that we've enjoyed this dish for many, many years. And because of you, we can make it. So hopefully everybody out there that's watching this uh, will enjoy making it as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, add your comments, feel free to share. And in the next episode, episode four, we're going to come right back to America now. We're going to do my crab cake, and uh, it's a little bit different than most traditional crab cakes, but I think you'll enjoy it. And until then, be well, eat well. Thanks.